Astronomers have discovered over 150 planets that orbit other stars in our galaxy. David Charbonneau is assistant professor of astronomy at Harvard University and an astronomer at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. As a planet hunter, he makes use of a range of amazing tools to embark on the search for other Earth-like planets. I was um, very active in the Boy Scouts. I used to go camping uh, out in the woods uh, in Canada all the time. And uh, I would always bring my little star chart with me and try to figure out the constellations. So since about the age of uh, seven or eight, I remember uh, lying on my back in the, in the woods in Canada, looking up through the trees and trying to figure out which of the brightest stars I could, uh, I could recognize. So in the last 10 years, um, the exciting news is that for the first time, we have direct evidence for planets orbiting other stars. And of course, we're uh, very eager to know whether the other stars in the night sky have systems of planets like our own solar system, or whether the planets that orbit those stars are completely different. And the big question that we're all after is whether there might be Earth-like planets out there, and whether those planets, in turn, might have life on them. Now, we can't get search for those very small Earth-like planets, so what we do is look for the big, bulky planets like Jupiter and Saturn, which we are able now to detect. And possibly, if we see those, and see that they're in the right place as compared to our own solar system, then we might begin to plan to look for Earth-like planets, uh, maybe in about five or ten years, and then maybe ten years after that, to begin to search for life on those planets. There's, there's really two ways that we can look for planets around other stars. And the way that most planets have been found is by the wobble technique. And the way the wobble technique works is that, of course, we can't see the planet directly. The planet doesn't emit its own light. It only reflects a little bit of starlight, and that's very, very faint compared to the glare of the central star. And so all we can do is watch the star very, very carefully. And if we have a planet that's orbiting around a star, then, of course, the star itself wobbles as the two sort of dance around each other. And we can see the star actually being pulled towards us and away from us and towards us and away from us in a little orbit. And so if we can see stars that are like the sun that are being pulled around in these circular orbits, then we can infer that there must be a planet there that's pulling it around, and we can figure out how far away the planet is from the star and how much the planet must weigh. The other way that we can look for planets around other stars is by what we call the transit technique. And the transit technique essentially is a little eclipse. If we're fortunate enough to be looking exactly in the plane of the orbit, to be seeing the planet and the star system edge on, then every orbit, the planet will actually pass right in front of the star. And when it does so, it'll make a little eclipse, it'll block some of the light from the star. And that little eclipse is something we can measure very well these days. And that'll tell us exactly how big the planet is, because we can figure out how much of the light it blocks of the star. As well, how far away from the star it is, because uh, we can figure out how uh, long the orbit is. And that tells us the distance between the planet and the star. What we'd really love to do, of course, is take an image uh, of a planet directly. We'd love to take a, a snapshot, a, a family photograph maybe, and see a bright star uh, surrounded by little points of light, which are uh, little planets that are orbiting uh, uh, that star. Uh, of course, we can't do that yet, but if we can develop uh, very large telescopes in space, and those telescopes are able to make very, very precise measurements uh, so that they can cleanly separate out the glare of the central star and reveal those, those much fainter little points of light. Uh, and, and the analogy, that the technical challenge is, is really very much uh, akin to uh, perhaps trying to uh, identify a firefly that's buzzing around a searchlight uh, at some huge distance. And being able to, to get rid of all the light that's from that glaring searchlight and just pick out the little firefly that's buzzing around. Now we know of almost 150 planets around other stars. Um, that are like the Sun, and we can see that there's a huge diversity of planets. Some of them look like our own Jupiter and Saturn, some of them don't. We don't yet know about any Earth-like planets, and that's simply because we don't have the ability to detect them. We can only see big planets because uh, they're more massive, they're physically larger, and so they're easier to detect. We're working our way down, so now we can see planets as small as Neptune, uh, which is about 20 times the mass of the Earth. But to see true rocky planets, and of course planets that might be good places for life to call home, uh, that will have to wait another 10 years. And so maybe uh, 10 years from now, we'll be celebrating uh, uh, the first detection of an Earth-like planet. 